excited. I actually am excited. Hi everyone, today I am going to show you how to prepare for a sardine fast. This is part one of two. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. I hope you check out some of my other videos if you are new here. For returning viewers, welcome back. I hope you enjoy today's video. Okay, so today, I'm kind of excited about today. Uh, I am going to try to prepare those people that want to do a three day or 72 hour sardine challenge I want to help you get ready for that because there are so many benefits to it. Uh, what happened is that uh, I think it was sometime last February, I did a video and it was called What Happened When I Took the Dr. Boz 72 Hour Sardine Challenge. To this very day, I still get questions on that video. I get comments, concerns, you name it. It is still being viewed a lot every day today, right now, three, four months later. I've lost track of time. I have no idea. So this is going to be a two part series because there's so much I now have to tell you based on all the feedback I've gotten based on, the, you know, more times of me trying the sardine challenge. I really could only fit so much in today's video that I felt it was, it would be better to make two videos. So in today's video, I'm going to share two important tips and then tip number two just takes a long time to go through. So the first important tip is to make sure you try many different types of sardines before you start your sardine challenge. And the reason I say that is because to me, they all taste so different and the different brands taste different from each other. And there's just different combinations. These are the ones that I kind of use the most often. Now remember, I'm in Canada. Our choices are way more limited perhaps than where you live. Uh, we, we have a lot of these, the Brunswick brand. Uh, so for me, this is a, the least expensive brand. I have discovered though, and I never would have discovered this if I hadn't done a sardine challenge and decided to have lots of different sardines. I really prefer, well, this is not even a bristling one. There it is. I really have a preference for the bristling sardines. And so we do have a variety here in Canada of bristling sardines. Uh, this one uh, is a brand that's easily available in the US. I order it from Amazon. Uh, other than that, we're, we're pretty low on varieties. If I want to get a different variety, I either have to order it from Amazon, and in, in, even in that case, you have to buy sometimes a case or half a case or something, or go over the border to get them. I, when I was in Texas last month, I did try different sardines on the way there and back because there was just so many different ones available. Uh, so this is kind of my choices that I have here. And I'm so happy that I have found some that, that I prefer and a couple of them are available here. So I really suggest that you just, you go out there before you ever do it, you know, rather than buying a, you know, I'm gonna do the sardine challenge tomorrow, uh, I better get a case of something delivered to me today. I don't recommend that because you may hate them. Uh, there's so many different kinds. So uh, yeah, so that's tip number one. Tip number two, before you try a sardine challenge, if you have not eaten sardines or you have very limited experience with sardines, if the sound of sardines makes you feel a little ill, if looking at them makes you feel a little ill, it is really important to get used to them first before you try a 72 hour challenge. 
Now I've already put up some recipes and this is why I've broken this down into two parts because the majority of this video is going to be, I'm going to show you three brand new recipes for sardines that will help you prepare yourself for the taste, how they look when you open it, that kind of thing. Plus I'll share some of the recipes that are already out there that I've tried and you know, it'll be eye-opening for you to know that there are quite a few good sardine recipes out there. With that, I'm going to go over three that I'm going to show you today. Okay, so the three recipes I'm going to make today I actually got from this bag. I was inspired by this bag. So when I was in Texas, I stopped at the Trader Joe's in Boise, Idaho. Well, I stopped at the one in Bellingham. It was absolutely packed and I, it was not an enjoyable experience. But then I stopped again in Boise, Idaho and I got myself this sardine bag. Actually, I got, I got a couple of them. So not only is it brightly colored, it's full of information about sardines, front, back, and even on the bottom. Uh, so I, I really enjoy the bag. Now, what is on this bag is a bunch of ideas. Sardine fritters, sardine pate, sardine cakes, bacon wrap sardines, Sicilian sardine pasta, sardine tapenade. Tapenade, tapenade, I don't know. I'm taking my inspiration from three of these today. The three that I'm going to try today are bacon wrap sardines, sardine tapenade, and sardine pate. Uh, I have done something like uh, one of these other ones and, and I'll talk about that when I, when I get there. So I went searching online to find some and uh, there was, a couple that I settled on and they, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll go looking for a recipe and um, it is very off base from what I do myself, like as far as ingredients and that sort of thing. So I usually have to pare it down, you know, greatly. Now remember the sardine challenge is not, I mean, yes, I do carnivore, but the sardine challenge is not meant to be carnivore. So if you are a carnivore purist, you may not like what I'm going to show you today because I'm going to be using things like lemon and things like apple cider vinegar, mustard, that sort of thing. And that is to, you know, I'm using a bare minimum of ingredients that I am able to actually tolerate just to make this useful for somebody who is not you know, uh, they may not be carnivore, they may be keto, they may come from the standard American diet, you know, whatever, wherever you're coming from, you will be able to do these recipes. And if you don't enjoy this sort of thing, because you know, you just want to eat steak and, and, and butter on a plate, I'm all for that. So go for it. And, you know, do what you need to do. If what's working for you, or if what you're doing currently is working great for you and you're not having any need to raise your ketones, lower your blood glucose, then this may not be for you. I just want to tell you that right up front so you don't waste any more of your time. And so I get less hateful comments. That's what I'm hoping, but that may or may not work. So let's do the first one. I found a recipe for the sardine pate. Love the name. It's called incredibly tasty French sardine pate. Uh, I just thought it was a great name. I'm hoping it's incredibly tasty. These are my first time trying this. Uh, it's from May Simpkin and there is a printable recipe card which I will link below. However, because of you know some of these ingredients that I cannot tolerate, I'm leaving out and I'm just gonna make it just a little simpler and I'm hoping that it will still be incredibly tasty. So, uh, this recipe calls for sardine in olive oil, uh, and I'm kind of running low on sardines, but I think what I am going to do is I'm going to use this one here, the wild caught sardines in extra virgin olive oil. I'm also making only half a recipe of each one of these. And that's another tip that you can take to the, you know, away with you because 
you know, if you see a recipe and it sounds good, uh, maybe just make a smaller version of it to make sure you really like it. So here we go with the incredibly tasty sardine pate. Another tip when you're opening the cans, if they're packed in oil, uh, if you get oil on your shirt, that's, that may not come out. So uh, I'm getting pretty good at opening them, so I'm just gonna take my chances here. <laughs> gonna make sure I have some paper towels handy. You, you know, I recommend uh, while you're getting used to opening cans of sardines, do it in your sink. That is the safest. When you lift the lid off, if it splatters, it's just gonna hit the side of your sink. So there's the sardines. These are the wild caught sardines in extra virgin olive oil. See, there's no heads. A lot of people say they can't tolerate the thought of looking at those little faces. I, I've yet to open a can to see faces. The heads are gone. Everything in here, this is skin and bones. This is my preference. It's also Dr. Boz's preference, but I'm not the sardine police. You, whatever, Sardine tastes best to you is what you should use. Okay, so there's my one can of sardines. And I'm also going to put in, so they, they call for capers, a tablespoon, but I'm making half the recipe. So I'm going to put in half a tablespoon of capers. Whoops, I forgot about the liquid there. Let's see if I can get them out with a fork. It's got quite a narrow little uh, thing here. That looks like half, this is a half tablespoon measure close enough, and a tablespoon of butter. So again, I'm gonna use half a tablespoon because I'm making half the recipe. Now, uh, I know someone's gonna ask this. So if you were by chance using a can of sardines in uh, water, which many people do because they don't like the oil that it comes in, by all means, add your own either acceptable oil or put a little more butter in. That is fine. Okay, I'm going to add a half a tablespoon of Dijon. The last time I made something with Dijon, I had a couple people tell me Dijon was loaded with sugar. Uh, maybe it's my Canadian brand here, but I, I've never seen Dijon with any sugar in it. Uh, so I feel like just read labels and use some kind of mustard that does not have sugar. I'm sure they're out there. So there's my half a tablespoon of mustard. Juice of half a lemon. So I'm going to use the juice of a quarter lemon. I do have a lemon squeezer. <laughs> I just didn't go looking for it, but this will work. Oh, one seed. Salt and pepper. I don't do well with black pepper. It is one of those uh, spices that does bother me. Just gonna put in just, this is a quarter teaspoon. I'm just gonna barely put, oh, that is just white pepper. I meant to grab. Okay, I guess I'll just put a pinch of each in. A, just a little pinch of Redmond's fine salt and just a little pinch of white pepper there. So I'm just gonna mash it all up as best I can. See what we get. See if it is incredibly tasty. I'm sure it will be. All right, so we have a little pate. I'm just going to grab my spatula. I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so uh, here's what it looks like. Now, I don't mind this chunky consistency. I see here in the instructions, it says if you prefer a smoother consistency, you can do this in a food processor and pulse it until it's smooth. Check the seasonings. She suggests sprinkling chops, chives or spring onions on top. So which I think is great. So if you are keto, you could serve this with some uh, raw veggies, uh, you know, keto crackers or whatever. I did bring my carnivore melba toast here so that I could give it a try. I just want a little bit. Actually, first I'm gonna try it without the toast. Okay, let's see. Um, that actually is incredibly tasty. So here's how I would serve it, or on pork rinds. You could do pork rinds. I, these are uh, carnivore 
Melba Toast. I'll link to that video below as well. Mm -hmm. This is actually really good. So I, I would totally put this on a meat board or, or a charcuterie board or something for people to dip into. Um, so yes, so uh, thank you, May. It, it is incredibly tasty. I really appreciate it. I might add a bit more salt, I think. I probably didn't add enough salt, but other than that, I, I actually love it. So just gonna tidy up uh, ever so slightly and we'll move on to the sardine tapenade. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the sardine tapenade. It also calls for two cans of sardines. And again, I'm cutting this in half. So I'm going to grab one can of sardines, uh, bristling sardines in olive oil. It specifies in olive oil. So just the same as the other one. If, if you're using the water, just add you know, a teaspoon or so of your own olive oil or some other, you know, whatever you like. Get those little fishies out here. I'm gonna just slightly mash them a bit. Okay, so this recipe also needs papers. So I am going to, actually I'm gonna use a smaller spoon, see if I can, oh, <laughs> that one doesn't fit. Oh, here, this is sort of narrow. I need a half tablespoon measure. And again, you don't like capers, don't use them. The next thing is some vinegar. I'm going to use apple cider vinegar because I love the taste and I love the taste with sardines. I'm going to go with one teaspoon, so we're going to use half a teaspoon. It calls for three cloves of garlic. Now I would never, for myself, I can never use three cloves of garlic. Uh, I have some minced garlic here where a half a teaspoon is one clove. I'm going even with less than that. I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon. Um, because raw garlic, uh, this much in this recipe is not going to bother me. It's going to just give a hint of garlic. If you're good with garlic, go for it. I just have to be careful, but it's nice to get that little bit of hint of garlic. Calls for a pinch of salt, that I will do. Got my Redmond's. And it calls for three grinds of freshly ground black pepper that I cannot do. I'm going to use the white pepper and I will use just a, just a pinch. Actually, I'll just scoop a tiny bit out here just to give it that pepper flavor. And then it lists all kinds of veggies you can use for dipping, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So this is almost like a sardine salad. I can smell the apple cider vinegar. I think it's going to taste really good. And I have another sardine salad to tell you about. It's a, it's a favorite of mine. It's, I would call it ketivore. So here we have this nice chunky, you can certainly mash it more. I, I kind of like things like this. Okay, so I'm going to give this a taste. Just uh, we'll toss it a bit, get those capers mixed in nicely, which I think they are. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now this is my preference, but I'm going to add another half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar because I don't think it has quite enough tang, but it, it, it is good. So, you know, that this is just me. Just give it another toss. Now I'm smiling. It's perfect. So let's put a little bit on a cracker here. For me, Either of these would make a great lunch. I love both of these. It is a fantastic way to get yourself used to sardines um, without just like opening up a can and putting them in your mouth. So I'm going to put these aside just for a moment because I want to talk about, before we head to the stove, I want to talk about some other recipes that are out there. I have a list here. First one I want to mention is a very easy sardine salad. 
I found the sardine salad on uh, Mary's Nest YouTube channel. Very sweet woman. She's totally not keto or carnivore, but she has some amazing stuff on her channel. I follow her anyways, because I just love her. I did a short showing my pared down version of her sardine salad, which does have a little bit of parsley, a tiniest bit of onion, just to give it that flavor. I'll link uh, her channel below because she made me think of it, you know, and also uh, my short, it's a one minute video, shows you how to put together the sardine salad. The other one I wanna talk about is Dr. Lisa Wiedermann's uh, sardine bisque, I guess is what uh, we're calling it. It is a wonderful soup. It uses a can of sardines. Um, she uses the water packed. It uses a quarter cup of cod livers. Uh, I made it yesterday. Oh, it also has bacon bits in it and it has butter and it is wonderful. Uh, here, I, so it makes a huge serving. Too much for me to eat in one sitting because uh, I find soup just really fills me up. So here's my leftovers. You can see kind of what that looks like. It is delicious. Now she has some variations of this, you know, where you can add cream and uh, I can't remember what else. So what I'm, uh, oh, oh, and I wanted to mention that when I was at KetoCon, uh, my roommate Tatiana and I met her there. Uh, I'll show you a picture up there. Now I stayed very calm, cool and collected. You'll see from the picture, Tatiana, not so much. <laughs> Uh, but we got a great picture and uh, I, I just, I totally enjoyed meeting her. Uh, her soup's amazing. So I'm gonna link you to two things from her channel. One is where she makes the soup with some variations. And the other is where she also talks about her own version of doing the sardine fast. She is, you know, she is suggesting that if you need to make some changes, like making some of these recipes, you know, during this time, the, the, as long as you're getting these sardines in, you know, like she's not the sardine police, I'm not the sardine police, we're not gonna tell you how to do it. Uh, I, I just wanna share the things that work for me and I wanted to do it, that, you know, that first video that I did, I wanted it to be as close to what Dr. Boz recommends as possible because Dr. Boz, you know, she's working with actual patients and, and she has lots of experience. So, um, so I did that, but I, I feel like any way you can get those sardines in, get them in. You know, that's kind of the bottom line. So uh, I'm gonna link to those two videos below uh, I will be having this leftover soup later today. It truly is a nice tasting soup. I just love it. Um, so I want to also mention the other recipes that will help you get used to sardines and perhaps you could even use them on your own version of the sardine challenge. Sardine balls or cakes. Now I have an air fryer sardine cake recipe, or I don't even know what I call it. Maybe I called it balls. One of those two. They're little balls. You cook them in your air fryer. You'll see that up there. I'll link below. Breaded fried sardines. Now I used whole sardines out of the can, just like the ones I used for these two today. I used Indigo Neely's breading. You could just use pork rinds if you want. You could use the carnivore crisp flour if you want. You can use your favorite keto or carnivore breading, uh, but it worked really nicely with Neely's breading and uh, so I recommend that. Um, and oh, I already mentioned the sardine salad. So all of those links will be below so that you can try out some of these other recipes and get yourself on that sardine trail. You know, even if you never do a sardine challenge, even if all you do is add some regular sardines into your rotation somehow, I think it's a good healthy benefit, which I'll be talking more about in part two. Now, just to finish off this video though, let's go to the stove and we're gonna make some bacon wrapped sardines. Okay, so here we are at the stove. I am just melting down some lard. 
Um, it is, uh, I think I put in about a good quarter to a third of a cup in there and it's in a very small heavy pan because I'm, again, I'm only making a portion of the recipe that I found, uh, which I, I didn't actually find a good recipe, but I looked at a few and then kind of did my own thing uh, from what I saw. So I decided it would probably be best to use the larger sardines. This can, you saw the other cans where there was, you know, 12 at least sardines in there. These water packed Brunswick water packed spring water sardines they only have four sardines in the can. So they are a lot bigger. Okay, so I'm just gonna drain the water out of here so it doesn't make a big mess. Uh, I'm gonna drain it in a little container because the dogs love sardine water. Okay, so I have some bacon here as well, which I have cut in half. It's just regular sliced bacon. You know, whatever kind is your favorite kind. And uh, I don't know how tricky this is going to be, but I'm going to do my best. I am going to roll up each sardine into one of these pieces of bacon and secure it with a toothpick. Now maybe I should have used the whole piece, or maybe not. Uh, basically, we're going to deep fry these sardines. Okay, I need to put this down because otherwise I'm going to squish it in my hands. Okay, so there's one. Here's another. Okay, I can hear that bubbling, so I'm going to put one of these sardines in here and get it going. Uh, if you're making a whole bunch of these, obviously you want a bigger pan, but you want to go deep so that you don't get splatters everywhere. So if you have a deep pan for frying, oh, maybe that wasn't quite hot enough. Okay, should be sizzling. It's yeah, okay. It sounded like it was ready. <laughs> I'm thinking this is going to be a couple minutes per sardine. I'm going to move one sardine over and put my second sardine in there. Get two at a time going. I would think in a large pan, you know, deep sided frying pan, maybe even a Dutch oven type pan, you could probably have six or eight sardines going. I think that would work. One thing I didn't think of when I used this small little pan is that they need to be flipped over, so uh, that's not so easy when there's not much room. I'm going to attempt it with some chopsticks here. Oh, and I broke it. Okay, so lesson learned there. Uh, I will try this one with the wooden spoon. I have tongs, but I was kind of afraid I would squish them and break it just like I did with that one, which I ended up doing with the chopsticks anyways. But, yeah, so next time. <laughs> oh no. I'm going to set the timer for two minutes for this. Well, we'll get to try just a uh, plain deep fried sardine over there. The top half that broke off that. I'm also kind of thinking that maybe I should have gone ahead and used a whole piece of bacon for each sardine. I kind of thought maybe, you know what, I'm going to unwrap one of these sardines and rewrap it with a whole piece of bacon. All right, how are we, do how are we doing here? 
they look like they need a little more time. I broke my sardine when I tried to take it apart and rewrap it, but what I wanted to do was wrap one of these big ones. So I just open another can. I'll, I'll end up eating them anyways, doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to wrap it with a, a whole piece of bacon. Okay. So I'm going to fish these out. Oh, I get it, fish them out. All right. All right, this tiny little pot was not the best idea, I can tell. All right, I'm gonna get them out. Okay, we are ready with our bacon wrap sardines. You know, while I was doing all that and splattering grease everywhere, I was wondering how these might work out in the air fryer. I think I will try that next time, but uh, here we are today. So I'm gonna try one that where the bacon fell off. I just wanna see what it tastes like. Maybe deep fried sardines without anything are a thing, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would definitely eat that. I would like to add a little bit of salt. I will say, uh, appearance wise and keeping everything together wise, the one here that I took the half piece of bacon off and wrapped it completely in bacon, like a whole strip of bacon, turned out the best. Everything stayed together and contained. These other ones kind of started to fall apart and I just didn't have enough bacon coverage. So that's, uh, that's something for you to think about. I'm going to try this piece that has the bacon on it. Mm. <laughs> I really don't like to eat on camera, but you know. Uh, people always complain if I don't try it. So amazing wrapped in bacon. So what I would do for, you know, just what I learned from this is a bigger pan, high sides, use the uh, bacon, uh, what do you call it? The splatter screen if you've got one, wrap each sardine, unless you're using the tiny sardines. If you're using the bigger sardines, wrap each one with an entire uh, piece of bacon about two to three minutes per side, like just flip them over and uh, they're good. The, uh, they're worth doing. I would certainly do these again uh, with some of those things that I said in mind. And I also will try them in the air fryer. At this point, I don't know how, you know, people are gonna ask me, well, how many minutes? I don't know. No idea. I'm going to try that at some point, uh, maybe this week. Okay, so I am going to put all the links for these recipes below, the ones that exist. Some of them, you know, are in my brain. Uh, Dr. Lisa's Amazing Soup, uh, some of my other ones that have already come up, I'll link to my uh, sardine challenge video so that you know what that looks like normally. All those things. Don't forget to watch part two. So part two should be coming up maybe a couple of days after part one, I hope. I'm gonna answer all the questions. I have got things from all the comments and questions that people have given me over the last three, four months about this sardine challenge. I hope to get to them all. So, but for now, before you do your sardine challenge, start trying some recipes, get yourself used to the taste of sardines. That is really what I'm saying here and what this video is about. So we'll see you on that part two of getting ready for the sardine challenge. Uh, thank you for watching. I moved where you told me to move. Hang on, I have to write down something before I forget. But, um, but I do would like, do, I would like to add a little bit of salt.